Facebook. Welcome people. Hi, good to see you again. Um, welcome to this unique um, opportunity for me to actually try and do some runway stuff while well, you guys have another view of my studio and you're able to see me full bodied. So um, we're going to do things a little differently tonight because I'm going to be standing up and I'm going to be walking back and I'll show you my feet and I'll show you my posture and some tricks to help you do better. So that's kind of what this is all about. I've spent a lot of time in this Facebook group talking about acting because acting is so much more complicated. Um, but there's such a skill set involved in doing runway and we talked about print. So this is kind of like something we hadn't really delved into too much. We talked a lot about the business and how to handle some of those obstacles and things. And so this is a different chance and I really hope everybody enjoys it. I think it's going to be a fairly popular video because I once a long time ago um, did how to walk in heels on my son's YouTube channel and it ended up with more followers watching that than any of his videos and I felt kind of bad. I'm like, I'm stealing your thunder. But I guess people really do want to know how to walk better and even present themselves. And if it's not runway that you're looking to do, having really great presence is super important. And having excellent posture, like I used to watch Julia Roberts in her early things and, and her shoulders were slouched forward. And wow, I'm getting a lot of likes and a lot of love. Thanks guys. Um, and it, it took away from some of her gracefulness and some of her beauty. And I have noticed over the years that it's changed and she's developed that part of herself. And it's really great. And I think that everyone should do that. When you walk into a room, you want to feel like you can, you know, grab the attention that you want to um, exude and, and be able to feel comfortable and confident. And Runway does that for people. I have talked to some girls that were... Um, tall and skinny and they felt awkward because they weren't the norm and they might have been like in their early teens and you know it was a, a weird phase for all girls but um, they would shoulders down and, and hide their height because they felt strange and yet when they got onto a runway and they were able to walk in front of people and put their shoulders back and feel comfortable and confident it changed their entire outlook um, one girl said to me, I used to walk through the halls of school holding my backpack like this, but now I'm like this because I walked on a runway. And it's a great feeling. It's an amazing thing to know that, that you can at least appear confident and, you know, fake it till you make it, right? If you don't really feel the most confident in the world and you just put on the air of confidence, then that confidence kind of grows on you a bit. And, and even in that moment, you'll just feel a little better because you'll know that you're showing up and showing out. And if it's a business opportunity and you have to present to a room or if you have to do public speaking or if you have to you know, accept a, an award and walk on the stage, any of these things could really benefit from having excellent presence and excellent posture. So I really wanted to do this for everybody today. And, and I know there's, there's some people out there that are like, I don't really fit into the model mold and you know, that's really not who I am. And my brother's watching. Hi, Darren. Everybody knows Darren, my brother, the photographer. Say hi to Darren. Um, anyway, there's girls out there that, that sometimes think, you know, I'm not really runway material. And you might think that because everyone says that you have to be like five, nine and up to be on a runway. And really it's not completely true. Um, it's a limitation, it's not an end-all be-all, and I'll explain a little bit about how that works too. Um, I did make another worksheet for everybody. So in the unit, unit 11, can you believe I have given 11 hours of free time to helping everybody to learn a little bit more about this business? But in the unit, unit 11, um, there's a worksheet. And if you have printed that up or if you pull it up on your phone while you're watching this on your computer, you know, if you can follow along with it, it is intended to help you, hi Rachel, it's intended to help you um, retain this information. It's intended to, you know, I know when I write things down, I remember them better and I used to do that in school all the time when I'd take notes to try and learn something. If you do that, 
it will sink into you a little more. And it's, it's just that hand-eye thing that makes it go into, you know, who you are as, as you're being. And that's why I really wanted to do that. You know, one, to keep you focused and so you can follow along. And, and two, as a takeaway, so you can remind yourself later. And even if it's just sitting there somewhere, you might go, oh, that reminds me I should practice. And it might just be the clue that helps you to do that. So that's why I do these and that's why I make the pieces of paper. So I would really, really, truly appreciate it if you focus on me for a little while. I want you to turn off every other tab on your laptops. I want you to not have the TV going in the background. I want you to really be here with me so that you can, you can move forward in your runway. There's, there's a rash of, I do call it a rash, um, a really bad runway out there. And it's kind of sad, but I'm hearing, I'm hearing designers talk about it. I'm hearing other agencies, big agencies like BMG, um, IMG, you know, I, they, they watch these models that are supposedly trained and yet they don't look like they have been. And what I've found is that the people that are doing the training are not, sometimes they're just not comfortable with giving a positive critique or they don't know how to do that, or they might see something that needs altering, but they haven't figured out how to say it so that it gets into somebody's head and they're able to understand what needs to be changed with their own body and their physicality. So it's really, really difficult to find good runway coaches. Um, I had, you know, at one point in time, I had 16 people that were part of my staff and in trying to find good runway coaches to take the place of myself, I realized that people can walk on a runway a ton. They can have a lot of experience. They could have done tons of things and have a really amazing um, history and experience level, but that doesn't necessarily make them a coach. So what I wanted to do a little bit today, you know, is, is tell you a, a bit about what my brain does when I'm watching people walk and, and how I pick things apart and what it is that I'm looking for in a great one runway walk. Um, it's not, it's not real simple and cut and dry as everybody thinks. People think they can watch this on YouTube and learn how to do a runway walk, but you sometimes don't know what your own body is doing while you're doing it. You know, you can videotape yourself and watch it back, but are you the one that can coach yourself? And that's essentially what you're trying to do. And that's very, very, very difficult. Um, I know that now we're in this, you know, situation and not everybody can come here and be in my studio and walk in my room and, and I can touch their feet. I can't do that stuff. And for a while I thought maybe that would be a limitation of what I can do to help people. However, um, some of the people that I have coached online and have helped with runway in their first runway show, they were actually chosen by the designer to open the show and to walk the designer at the end. And they were totally coached by webcam. So I realized that it actually works. So I'm going to do this tonight and show you some really basic stuff and you can practice this and you can stand up and do it with me. And if you have a, a nice floor that you can work on or you know a hallway where you can practice, um, I am so happy to see people's videos. If you wanna send them to me and show me how your walk is coming along, I'm happy to look at them all and um, tell you what I think and, and that kind of thing. But to kind of give you three really important elements, this is on the worksheet, three really important elements to doing an excellent runway walk. First off, you've gotta have good posture. If you don't have good posture, that gown is not going to look like it's hanging properly. Your job as a model is to be a walking hanger. We're trying to sell clothes and promote the fashion. And as we're doing that, we have to have good posture or it's not going to hang right. And it's not going to look as attractive as it should. And that will hinder their ability to sell it or to promote it to um, buyers. So it's really, really important that you have good posture. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to check your posture here tonight. So that's coming. Another thing you're gonna really need to do well on the runway is confidence. And I know that people get up on a runway for the first time and it's scary. <laughs> There's a big room full of people out there, they're all watching you and it seems scary. But truly, everyone is excited to see you and everyone is trying to um, take in the entire experience and totally enjoy it. They're on your side. And a lot of times there's, my mother used to say this all the time and I've used it too. There are two kinds of people in any audience. There's the people that know you and they love you. You could do the worst job and they would just still go, you are great. 
you could fall off the end of the runway. You could drop everything. You could, um, I have seen very few people actually fall on a runway, very few. And I've been to tons of fashion shows. It's, here we go in this digital age where everybody can go through the entire internet for every runway show that's going on and try and pull out some, run, some runway model falling on the runway. And it's not fair because it doesn't happen that often. Um, don't worry about that so much because it's, it's really not a thing. Confidence. You will feel confident if you realize that the people out there that love you are going to love whatever you do. And the people that are out there that don't know you will probably forget you if they ran into you the next day at the gas station. They would have no idea who you are. So they really don't care all that much. I have actually tripped going onto a runway and it was a time when I was supposed to be doing this big speaking thing. And so I got up on the runway because I hadn't walked a runway walk in a long time. I'd been working in TV and film and I had them play music for me and I walked up the steps and tripped right onto the runway. And then I straightened myself back up and I did my best runway walk and I stopped at the end and then I presented for an hour a talk about being in TV and film. And yeah, like a year later, somebody came up to me and said, I remember you, you did that thing at that talent convention, you were really funny and informative. And just as a test, I said, did you remember seeing me trip? And she went, you tripped? And I said, yeah, when I did my runway walk, I tripped and she went, I, I didn't see that. I don't remember that. So you can totally blow them away with whatever you do after the trip or before the trip. So they completely forget. They don't care that much. They really, truly don't. So don't let that hinder your confidence. Keep your confidence level up. It's really, really important that you exude confidence and take that stage. That is your moment. That is your time to shine. So make it yours. So, okay, that's really important. The other thing that's really important is technique. Now there's a lot of people in that audience that don't know anything about technique, but the people that do may be important people and they may have a lot of opportunity for you. So if you don't know what you're doing, those people, that certain segment of people who could be really important to your future will be able to tell what you did right and what you did wrong. So you've got to, know what you're doing and there's an awful lot of things that are common faux pas i think that's actually the next thing i, I said about oh no um no i'm going to tell you a little bit about the posture part right now i'm gonna i'm gonna stand up um i'm gonna back up because i have to you know hold this on a tripod i have to kind of do some maneuvering here but i'm gonna back up and i'm gonna show you a way to make sure your posture is good so we're gonna start with that and then we'll move into some other topics on the worksheet. So now I'm getting up and yes, I'm tall. So my head goes off the top if I'm not careful. I'm going to move my chair out of the way and I'm going to back it up. Now, if you need to make yourself check your posture and make sure that your posture is really, really good. Um, moms are great for this. They help a lot. They say, put your shoulders back, stand up straight. Well, when mom's not around telling you what to do or how to do it, you can practice this yourself. You want to get up against a wall, and I know I'm not up against a wall here, but you want to find a flat wall. And you want to give yourself like an inch with your feet, the heels of your feet about an inch away from that wall. When you're doing this, you want to keep your knees flexed. There's no locking of knees. Locking of knees can make you sway and make you pass out if you ever do it. So try and keep a flex in your knees. It also keeps a nice posture and a nice um, glide when you're walking. So Start practicing having your knees just a little flexed all the time. You shouldn't ever have them locked. So get up against that wall, give it a little space. And then what you wanna do is you wanna suck in the stomach, tuck in the butt, roll the shoulders back and down. Now, this, when this happens, see I'm standing like normal. Okay? I'm gonna try and make you see my silhouette as, as best as possible. If I suck in my stomach and tuck in my butt, my knees go out a little bit, but you see how that slims me right away and my shoulders go back and down. When I'm back and down, I look comfortable. My arms stay loose, my legs can still move, but I'm keeping control in this part of my body. And that's really, really important when you start doing turns. So you wanna suck that in as much as possible, tuck that in. Sometimes this part of your hip bones will move forward, and that helps to keep that looking really thin. 
Now, you noticed I also kind of did this. <laughs> when you're flat to a camera, you're wider. When you do this, you look thinner. So, that all should happen. Your chin should stay parallel to the floor. Keeping that like that. Don't let this tuck in. So people tend to go like this, and they throw their shoulders back, and then they kind of do this thing with their chin. You don't want to do that. It's very unattractive, and I just did that on live Facebook. So anyway, you can laugh at me. Go ahead. I do strange things. Okay, up like that, tucked in like that. Now, that will be perfect posture. If you're leaning against that wall, this sway in your back, which most people walk around with their butts out like this, that sway in your back should go away, and there should be very little space between you and the wall. If you can actually touch this part of your back to the wall, then you know you've really got your posture on. Now the other thing you want to do is to keep that lift, is imagine there's a string, and the string comes out of the middle of your head and pulls you up like a dancer. Somebody mentioned that the dancing techniques help a lot with, with runway, and that's absolutely true. So that's what dancers do, is they practice lift, and it's the lift of the whole rib cage, and that adds Looks like it adds height to you, but it certainly adds presence. I like to use the term being hyper in the moment, and this is hyper in the moment compared to being here. This is being here. This is presence. This is boom, I'm here. Hi, how are you? And that's really, really important. Now, another thing you can do to practice this, and I put a little tool over here. Mm -hmm. Dancers do this too. I took my broom. I know I have this fancy broom. I took a broom, and I took the handle off of it, and what you can do to check that your ribcage is there and that you're abusing that lift is practice walking like this. And I know you need a lot of space so you don't smack into anybody, but if you practice walking like this, it's going to lift that ribcage and you'll get used to feeling that lift. And you can use that as you're walking and as you practice. I've worked with some models that, that for some reason their ribcage was like way out here when they would pose. And this makes sure that everything is in line. So if you're up like this and you've got your lift going on and you feel that string pulling you up and your chin is parallel to the floor and your shoulders are back and down and your stomach's tucked in and your butt's all tight like you could carry quarters in there. Yes, I said that. Um, this is what will give you proper posture. So as you're walking, when you get into that proper posture up against the wall, then you walk forward. Now, runway, te runway techniques change. Over time, they change. And if you want to be an excellent runway model, boom. If you want to be an excellent runway model, you have to pay attention all the time to what is going on with the styles now. Sometimes it's one thing, sometimes it's another. And I have been doing this for 30 years. Times change. And I, I watch and I listen for what people are being coached as saying, what, what people are trying to tell models to do. And um, I, somebody came back and said, oh, my modeling coach just told me I have an excellent crossover. Well, crossover was when you crossed your feet over like that as you were walking. Well, the crossover isn't what tends to be on the runway so much anymore. It used to be. It's not so much anymore. you got to look back to the current New York Fashion Week stuff, look into the spring collection, see what they were doing when it was February, and find out what the model's feet look like. Most of them right now are doing straight in front of each other, as if they're walking on a straight line. So if you have, I have a great wood floor, I can make sure that my feet are going in a straight line and keep it going forward that way, and watch that I'm making sure that I'm really, truly straight. What's great is if you have a place in your house where you have you know, tile on the floor, linoleum, um, wood floors like this, and you also have a spot where you can get a reflection. So if it might be a sliding door or something like that, or if go to, go to Walmart and get yourself a $5 mirror that go, usually hangs on the back of the door, and put it at the end of the hallway. And you know, put it up in the kitchen. And you can take it down and move it around and stuff like that, put it in a closet when you're done. But use it for your runway practice. And make sure that while you're looking in the mirror, your feet are going straight. If you get into the habit of watching your feet going straight while you're looking down, you'll get in the habit of not having your chin parallel to the ground. So try and set yourself up so that you can see what you're doing at all times. That's really important. Once you've got this nice posture, hand position. Hand position for models 
is called a Model C. If you can see my hands, I know there's some things behind me. I'm going to come closer so you can just look at my hands. It looks like a Barbie. I've got my hands so that you can see this side or this side. Those are the pretty sides. Knuckles, look at that with the light on, it's weird. Knuckles, palms, not pretty. This is much prettier. So a Model C hand position is just really relaxed down to the side of your body. This should brush the sides of your legs as you walk and they should swing equally. I don't know how many models, I don't know what it is, but for some reason, they'll have like a crazy left arm and the other one stays still. So they'll be like that when they're walking. They need to move equal. And as they're swinging, a good way to gauge if it's swinging enough or not too much, as you step, your arm should be at about the same angle. It's gonna be your opposite arm, but it should be about the same angle as your leg when you step. So that's kind of what you wanna look for. If you videotape yourself, that's really great to do. Videotape it, play it back, look and see what you did, and check your arm swing. You also don't want to arm swing in front of you. There's a lot of this going on. If your arm swing in front of you, you're breaking up the line of the outfit. Not okay. So, no arm swings in front. Some fashion coordinators and designers do like the arm swing to the back. Some of them like that. I personally think it looks like something's wrong with your butt. And I'm not trying to do something down here. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it doesn't appeal to me. But um, it's good to know how to do what appeals to everyone. It's good to try and be able to chameleon. If you can only walk one way, it's not going to make everybody happy. So you want to practice different types and different styles. But you want to keep these right here, right next to you, so they're not in front of the clothing. It's very important. Keep your hands that way, not this way, not this way. This way, this way causes too much elbow, and that's kind of weird. So, nice posture, nice posturing. Okay, all that makes sense? Now, now that I can't see what I was talking about, I'm gonna make sure I'm going through my notes okay. So, um, I showed you the string, I showed you the mop handle. Um, I'm gonna talk about some runway styles, because, yeah, I said things come and go, and, 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 you know, the, the ones that did show up for a while and left, one was called the Clydesdale. And the Clydesdale was one models would pick their knees up really high and they would walk like that. And they don't use that so much anymore. And there was really big strides, like big strides. And yeah, okay, it made the legs look really long and big, but it really wasn't selling the clothes. So, Clydesdale's not in anymore. Um, sometimes you'll hear the grunge. And the grunge is when you're using a lot of foot flat down and using your hips. And sometimes they like this if they're showing some fashions that are kind of grungy. So if they ask you to do a grunge kind of walk, you're going to want to stomp your feet a little bit more and put some hip into it. That's what that is. Now, I have three that I like to coach people on. And I think that these, once you do these and you've learned these, it kind of can morph easily into something else. So the one that I see kind of went by the wayside. Um, people use the term fierce a lot, a lot, a lot. It's overused. And they're like, oh, let's see you be fierce. I want to see you be fierce. Well, fierce was a runway style like 15 years ago, but many designers, especially local designers that haven't gotten um, a real name for themselves yet, that are kind of up and coming, they might say they want to see a fierce walk. A fierce walk would mean that you are going to come at them with a lot of power and then you're going to stop. It's boom. It's very attitude. Fierce walk, you want to make an expression like, I want to kill somebody. That's what a fierce walk looks like. It looks really mean. So sometimes they'll ask for that, and sometimes it's not really what they mean. But if you throw on that fierce walk, maybe it's what they want. Another one that I like to call easy breezy. I was watching a Chanel show, and the women were walking in beautiful Chanel suits by topiaries with poodles. And the look they had on their face was not a total smile. They did not show teeth. It was just this little upturn at the sides of their mouth. Eyes were still straight forward, and they were walking with their dogs, and they looked like they were just having this lovely walk in the park. It was kind of a smaller step. 
very nice, very gentle, very elegant, very soft. And I call that easy breezy because it's like a nice little now, it's not quite as far off to one side as um, some of the local shows want a really, really friendly walk because they have a lot of people in the audience that they want you to really appeal to. And they're expecting you to do things like tilt your, turn your head to each side, smile. Now that's looked at as very pageant. So it doesn't happen very often, but sometimes they want a really smiley, like, kind of easy breezy. But little bit more personality to it. It's kind of fun to do those kind of shows. Um, some shows right now are doing things that are really crazy and they're like having girls like throw peace signs and be real fun. They're doing all that kind of stuff and, and you might be asked to do that. So practice all sorts of different things. We know the Victoria's Secret models had their, you know, they put their hands up and they're walking and they're having a great time. So having a personality that can transform between all of these types helps, helps a lot. Um, the last one I'm going to show you, I call Too Cool For You. And basically, it's like you are the coolest girl in high school and everybody else can just chase behind you and you're not going to talk to them anyway. Um, it's that kind of a vibe. It might be at college. It might be you work in, you know, in New York City in a magazine and your, your assistant is chasing you down and you're too busy for them. So the Too Cool For You walk is more like this is what you see in New York on the runways. It's, it's very straightforward, not a whole lot of expression, just total persona, attitude, presence. They don't look bored. You can't be dead model walking. So you've got to make sure that in your head somewhere you're creating a story, like I just said, like, like you're an editor of a magazine and you're just too important for that. I had somebody say to me as I was doing a fashion show for them, they said, I want to see my models look New York happy. And I went, I don't know what that means. I don't know what New York happy means because New Yorkers aren't really all that happy most of the time. And then it dawned on me. It means look happy that you're mean. <laughs> so I told my girls to look like there's some guy they used to date and he's in the, in the audience and you, he can't have you anymore. You dumped him. So it's more like you can't have this. And that was New York happy. The guy went, that's it, that's great, wonderful. So sometimes you have to chameleon. You have to take a little bit of this one and put it with a little bit of that one and, and try different things and see if they like your walk and the way um, that you do it. But the best things to do are to try and you know, keep your posture, keep your lift, keep your presence, keep your attitude, be friendly, be helpful, don't criticize, never criticize the fashions, never criticize another model. Any of that stuff is just not cool. So, you want to make sure <clears throat> that you are pleasant, that you are professional, that you are the walking hanger. So that's really, really important. Let me check my notes and see what I've skipped over, because I'm sure I might have done something. Um, common mistakes on the runway. Okay, very often, people will come and do what's called the H pose, which is at the end of the runway. We've seen it a lot, people stop like this. Now, a common mistake with the H pose is instead of just stopping like this and keeping their presence and keeping their string on, models will hit and they sink. You don't want to sink at any point in time. You don't want to, you don't want to do it, you know, maybe you've got to do a full turn. When you come out of it, you don't want to go and sink. You've got to keep that string on all the time. So as you come out, as you present yourself, your string is on. As you do your full turn, your string stays on. As you stop in your H pose, your string stays on. Those things should happen, not into the hip. So, common mistake is that. Another one is during the H pose, which is when your foot is straight forward this way and your other foot is to the side, your body should be making an H. That's an H pose. Another common mistake is when people do this, they don't hit it right and they pigeon toe their feet. They'll do this at the end of the runway. I have so many pictures of models with their toes towards each other. And then when they turn, it stays that way. And I can tell from taking snapshots of, of girls on the runway whether or not they know their technique. If you pigeon toe, that's not attractive. So there should be none of that. Um, another common thing, what was my other common thing? Oh, 
the arm swing thing. I already talked about that. So, none of this, none of this, none of this. Those are all clues that you have not been well trained. So, we don't want to do that. Practice, 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 keeping yourself nice and strong. There are two starting points when you're getting on a runway. And a lot of times now, you know, you get on the runway and immediately do your walk. But there are also times when you have to get onto a runway and wait your turn and wait for the other girl to come back far enough. And a lot of models just stand there looking like they're scared to death waiting to go. And that's not good. There's a very, it's old fashioned, it's been used forever, but there are two model stances. One is called a right model stance, one is called a left model stance. And really what might help you is if you make a, a cut out or a print out of a clock and put it on the floor and step on it and put your right toe on 12 and your foot should go right where the hands of the clock go. Now your left foot should slide up to the back heel in the instep of the back heel and be at about 10, 1030. That's where it should be, new 930, 10 o'clock, right there. So what happens is when you stand like this, it causes your legs to come together and the light between your legs goes away. You look longer. It's an amazing thing. So right model stance is that kind of a stance with weight on both feet, knees flexed, and then you flip to the other side for a left model stance. Now this is still used very commonly. If anybody watches Deal or No Deal, this is how the girls are standing. It is not the same as what pageant girls do, where they shift in a, a knee and go up on a toe. That's not what we do. We keep, keep our lift, keep our strain, stay up, stay present. That's really important. But if you start from a right model stance and you're waiting your turn to get up on that runway, you still have presence. You don't look like you're lost. You don't look like you're standing and waiting. You're posed. Very simple. Right model stance, you walk away with the right foot. Left model stance, you walk away with the left foot. Again, keeping it a nice straight walk, one right in front of the other. Okay? Practice this. Show me your feet. Show me what they're doing. Show me your posture. Show me your hands are moving well. I'd love to see video on all of this. So, okay, now what else did I do? Um, okay, I think I've done everything that I wanted to do while standing, except, um, Maybe I'll turn on some music for a second and give you guys like a walk walk instead of like these little itty bitty things. Does anybody want me to do that? I'll do that. I, I don't know how the music's gonna come through with me talking, so I'm just gonna stop talking, but I'm gonna turn on some music. Maybe. I unmuted it. It's not going. Just a sec. And I hear you now. It changed on me. Hold on a minute. Okay. It's a little slower tempo one. But I'm going to start from yours if I'm coming on. I'm off stage, waiting my turn. that I've seen, I know the love, thanks guys. Um, one of the things that I've seen a lot of girls do, you know, you get long legs, you think you have to make these big long steps. If you do that, you're gonna get more bounce. If you keep your steps smaller, you can have more glide. So if you wanna stay graceful and you wanna have that presence of being someone that people look at and go, oh wow, I wanna watch her. 
Try and keep that glide, make it really pretty. It'll be nice that way. Okay, so um, some of the other things I wrote down. Um, one of the questions is how often do you plan to practice and for how long? So should you practice every day? Absolutely. Um, I've had people that I knew that practice for three hours, five times a, a, a week in between seeing me once a week. And every time I would see her, the improvement she had made was enough that I was really easily able to say, okay, let's move on to another technique. Let's move on to something else. You know, I, I teach people um, half turns, full turns, three quarter turns, um, backwards full turns, um, all sorts of things. You know, there, yes, there's H poses, but there's other poses. There's how do you take off your jacket and, and work that properly. How do you work with two people? How do you work with three people? There's all sorts of things that you know you can move on to, but not if you don't practice. Because as you're learning and as you're growing, if you have not practiced, it fades a little bit, even week to week. So you can do, learn something new one week and then not touch it again, and then you're backwards from where you started. And it's, and it's not cool to have to go backwards. You really kind of want to be able to move forward with what you're learning. So the more that somebody practices, the more I'm able to do that. I've had situations where people um, had walking on tiptoes. Um, I've had people that walked with one foot pigeon toed. Um, I had people that curled up their hands as they would walk. I watch from head to foot as someone's walking. How's your head? How's your shoulders? Are they even? Are they crooked? Is your head tilted? Is it crooked? I will look at all those things. I watch the hips to make sure there's not too much hip sway or too much rotation this way. I watch the knees to make sure there's not too much bounce or not at all. All those things. Then the feet. Of course the feet. And expression. It's a lot. <laughs> but that's all part of technique. And I can see it real quick and I can see it in an instant. And I really, really wish that there were more um, people who are comfortable at picking apart the model's walk and telling them exactly how to fine tune it and how to make it truly stunning and feel comfortable with saying things. You know, I, I had somebody once that every time they turned, they'd do this. Like every turn that they made, they'd do this. I'm like, you're chicken necking, what is that? And they'd laugh and then they'd go, am I really? And that stopped them from ever doing that again. But we had a good laugh about it. And sometimes you have to be really comfortable with saying, you know, there's something you need to fix here. And I think everybody would want to hear what they need to fix. You don't want to stay in the same place, especially when you're paying somebody to teach you how to better yourself. The, the whole point is, please let me know what I'm doing so that I can make sure it's even better. And yes, you do have to encourage and you do have to say, this part was good and this part was great. And maybe your posture is really good, but your feet aren't going okay. You know, we, you have to give encouragement too, but it's really, really important when you're looking for a coach that you find somebody who is not just going, good, next, good, next, do it again, next. It, that doesn't work. Um, you wanna hear their success stories. You wanna know who they've coached who's gone on to do something else. You wanna know this, this is important. It doesn't matter how much they walked on a runway necessarily. Um, I have a lot of people that are approaching me right now to coach for me and they'll tell me that they were coach, a coach at this company or at that company, and, and, and that's all fine and that's great, and I, I respect that. But what did those companies do to teach you how to be a coach, is my question. And I don't know, I don't know. A lot of them were kind of thrown in because they had some basic knowledge. I've worked alongside coaches that said things to people like, oh, that's not gonna cut it. Like right before they were gonna meet somebody from BMG, right outside the door. Somebody said that to one of their students. And uh, my heart nearly broke. I'm like, okay, come out of line. Come, come here with me right now. I'm gonna fix this like now. And made them feel better and made them feel more confident so that they could walk into that room. You can't just tell somebody, oh, that's not good. And not tell them how to fix it. The girl that's hands were curling up. I had to tell her to imagine that she was pointing at the ground. And once she started to do that, her hands stretched out. She wasn't actually pointing but I made her over-exaggerate it so that it fixed it. Some people don't know how to do that. So you gotta be real careful um, who you use as a runway coach. Um, 
Other things, what does a model need to be successful? You need to know what you need to bring with you. Having a, an appropriate model bag ready waiting all the time is really, really important. So you need to know what to bring with you because otherwise you could end up in a, in a really bad situation and totally unprepared for it depending on what, they may, they may make changes from when you had a fitting and you thought you were gonna wear this and now you're not gonna wear that anymore. So those things are important. I have had designers love me because I brought garbage bags with me to all of my fashion shows that I put on the floor so that in case of any of their, their garments fell off as the girls were changing, they would not be damaged. And as soon as they saw me doing that and taping it to the floor, they went, oh, thank you. And of course they called me again and again. Those are things that people don't think about unless you know what should be in your model bag. So that's something that you really want to know. Um, where was I? Oh, protocol, meaning what you should do, what you shouldn't do, how you should talk to people, how you shouldn't talk to people. There is a protocol about these things. Um, a model needs to know how to market herself in order to be good, in order to work a lot too. You really need to understand how to make the most of every opportunity and how to make sure that it becomes another opportunity. That's very important. Um, you need to know business practices. I've had a lot of models that went, they got coached someplace and I'd say to them, okay, do you know what a voucher is? And they'd look at me and go, what? like a voucher is what you need to get paid. You don't know how to get paid. So that's really, really important. Um, we were talking about, about my petite people and I'm gonna talk a little bit about limitations because that's the next thing I was hearing. See, I wish I was taller for runway, Alicia says. I'm 5'7", girl, stuck in a 5'1 body. <laughs> that's really cute. You know what, I've had, honestly, I've had great, wonderful, amazing women who were petites and when they could rip a runway like nobody's business, I was able to sell them. I was able to sell them that, oh, wow, she's got a really great walk though, and I know she's not as tall as you thought, and you were saying you wanted five nine and up, but oh gosh, she's this tall. And they'd go, oh, but I love her. Like, well, yeah, she's only this tall. And they went, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> like, well, you hire her anyway? They say, yeah. I'm like, good, that opened the door for everybody else. If they make clothes that can fit your body, there's no reason why you can't walk in that show if you're good at walking, if they love your walk. It'll make them go, oh, I didn't know that, I love her. And the more that you do that, the more that they, they like to go, I love all kinds of women. That's, that's the next thing that they say. But we love to show off for all kinds of women. And, Petite models can work for a petite clothing designer or a petite show or a petite boutique. These things are out there. And I've had girls that as long as they could walk. And most, most petite girls are told they shouldn't learn to walk. They're told they're not going to work anyway, so why learn to walk? Well, if you can't walk, no, you can't do the show. But if you can walk and you're petite, you might be able to do some specialized shows. It's no, I can't get you into Miami Fashion Week. Um, the shortest girl I ever got in the Miami Fashion Week was 5'8". And she had an incredible walk. And she ended up signing in New York and they're like, that one inch doesn't bother us anymore because she's excellent. So that can change. That, that whole attitude can change. But you're still, you know, she was still the shortest girl to walk in Miami Fashion Week. So you can't set your, sets, your sights in the wrong direction. Um, like, I will never be a jockey. I can't, I love horses. I like to ride horses. I will never be a jockey. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. So, at any rate, um, set your, your sights and your focus on the right things. Make your skill set as high as it possibly can be. The more that you do that in any realm of anything in your life, the more success you're gonna have. And sometimes it's a limitation. It's not an end all be all. Um, you know, Dara's talking about, about painter's cloth that she put under clothes at her, at her shows and things so that she didn't ruin her clothes. Hi, Dara. She knows I love her. Um, okay, other things. Height, weight, teeth, hair, attitude, shyness. Height, weight, teeth, hair, attitude, and shyness. I put all those down as um, limitations that might hold you back from optimum su success. If you don't have good skin, good hair, good teeth, good body. I know that sounds awful because everybody's like, oh, but what about the plus size people? The plus size people still have to have a good body. They have to be healthy. 
most of the girls that I know that are plus size girls, they're actually dancers. So they have like big dancer legs and they're just really fit kind of things, but they, they're bigger shoulder, they're broader shoulders. And, and that's fine, but they're healthy. So if you want to do those kind of things, try and make yourself healthy. Height, weight, teeth, hair, attitude, and shyness. That's what I wrote down. Now, some things, height is a limitation, not an end-all be-all. Weight is a limitation. However, with weight, that's also something within your control. If, if a man wants to be a leading man on, on the film and on the big screen, he should be working out, it helps. If a girl wants to be a model, she should be taking care of herself. She should diet and exercise and, and be accountable for that. It will help. It will increase your marketability. That's really, really important. So um, take care of your teeth, take care of your hair, take care of your nails, no dragon lady fingernails, nothing really long and stupid. Um, any any go-sees, model calls, whatever, you should go with natural nails. You should go very light makeup, if any. Um, they don't want to think you're hiding anything. They'd much rather see you in the tank top and the and the jeans, skinny jeans, and, and doing it that way, then wonder if you're hiding something. So you try and show them everything. Attitude is very important, and by that, I don't mean like bring in the attitude, you know, yes, when you're on the runway, you bring attitude, but when you're off the runway, your attitude should be one of kindness, of being pleasant, of being helpful, of, of being willing, of, of fun, we like fun people. So that should be the attitude that you have there, and shyness will, ruin that. Um, if you can't put away the shyness and bring out your personality and have that presence and be polite and friendly, it'll, it'll hinder you. Um, oh gosh, what's his name? I forgot his name. The guy that did Mel Gibson. That's his name. I'm like Mad Max. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson said, Shyness is selfish because it robs others of the gifts of you. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. I want to be able to see the gifts of everyone. I would love to experience all the gifts that everyone has to offer. But shy people who are usually thinking really nice thoughts but second guessing whether or not they should say them at all, rob me of the ability to see their gifts. Now they don't want to be called selfish, they don't but shyness is selfish. So if you tell that to a shy person, they'll usually start coming out more and, and talking more and understanding that we're all feeling robbed. And it's really, really lovely to see that happen. So take your shyness and throw it away. It's not serving you well anyway. Nobody ever like talked about somebody in the past tense because they haven't seen them in a while and go, oh, I really like her. She's so shy. It's great. Nobody says that. So <laughs> put that away. Stop thinking that that's pleasant. It's not pleasant. It's difficult to deal with because we want to know you. Most people want to have an exchange and want to feel connected. So let yourself out there. Say things you hadn't thought you'd say before. Let it go. Um, the double checking everything you say is really exhausting. You don't want to do that. Um, other things I've put on here. Well, at that point, you know, that, that whole entry on my, on my worksheet is because I want you to understand that there's things that are in your control and there's things that are outside of your control. You can't control whether or not you're five seven or five eight or five nine or five ten. You can't control that. You can control how many tattoos you have. You can control what you eat. You can control how often you practice. You can control a lot of things that your success is based on. So take control of those things and say, I'm gonna do everything that I can do to be successful, unless you really don't wanna be that successful. If you don't, then don't do anything. Don't try. The people I know that are trying to be really successful are out there working at it every day, doing something to better themselves, to better their situation, to better their career, to better their exposure to others in the industry that might give them a leg up. That's really important. So anyway, okay, that's about limitations. Told you two types of model stances, the right one and the left one. We got through the model C hand position. Um, an excellent way to tell if you're holding your head correctly, and I know this is gonna sound so old-fashioned, but you know, people put things on their head and walk with them on there. So you can do it with a book. You can do it with, a, I saw it on America's Next Top Model, they put bowls on the girls' heads with fruit inside the bowls. 
and they had to walk in crazy heels like that. Um, that's, it's gonna help you. It's gonna let you know whether or not your head's doing the right thing or if you've got too much bounce in your step. It's not easy, it takes practice, but it's something else that you can do. Um, here's what can you do to assure you're making an entrancing facial expression? Pull out your acting skills. Envision the things that I talked about, like envision the walk in the park. Envision um, you're a high-powered executive. Envision that there's somebody out there that you just want to shoot daggers from your eyes at them. If that's what it calls for, put on your acting. If you put on your acting and start focusing on that, sometimes um, after you know technique, after you know how, what to do with your hands and your feet, and that's all second nature, when you put on the acting, that starts to give you a real presence instead of dead model walking, no dead model walking. Dead model walking is bad. Um, what qualities should you look for in an excellent modeling coach? I, told, I talked a little bit about that. I want to make sure I didn't skip anything. Past success of students, ability to, to give direction and honest feedback. Um, you do want to check that they have some contacts within the industry so they can help you to move forward. I mean, who wants, who wants training that ends with nothing and you don't know what to do when it's over? No, you want somebody that's going to give you some information about what you can do to move forward after you've learned. Once you're excellent, you don't want to just stay home. Well, maybe you do right now. <laughs> um, speaking of which, oh, you want somebody that's affordable and you want somebody who's pressure free. You really don't need anyone to pressure you to do something if you really wanna do this. You really don't need a high pressure sales pitch kind of thing, you don't need that. If you really want this, you'll go do it somehow, some way, you'll find a way. And you don't need that kind of treatment. It's not necessary. Um, I do wanna make an announcement. Um, I talked about, about contacts and such, and some of you have heard that I go to the Industry Network in June. And they're not doing it this year, of course, because of California's new ways of, of reopening. And I, I really like their four stage format that they have for reopening. And I think it's really, really smart. I wish other states would follow into the same sort of idea. Um, but what they're doing is probably gonna take a while. And they're not allowing large venues and large groups of people until January. So there's a couple of ways we can look at this. The industry network, open stores that usually don't open to people because the receptionist usually says, you can't come in here. We don't want to see you right now. But they allow people like myself to choose people that I would take to this event who will then be placed in front of cast and directors and agents from major markets such as New York and LA. And I'm sure they're going to do this all safely. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of sanitizing and social distancing and those people never shook hands anyway. Um, but They've moved it to just the January event. They do January and June usually, but they're gonna just do the January event, which gives plenty of time. If somebody wants to work with me or apply to do this or show me that they have the ability, um, if you're ready, willing, and able to go in and benefit from an event like that, we now have an additional six months of time to prepare. So I'm able to start talking to people about whether or not they wanna go in January. And if that's something that you think is something you'd like to do, um, send me a message, let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions about that and send you the information and see if we can make that something that's possible for you or whether or not I think that, that maybe you wouldn't be ready or maybe it's not right for you. Um, I like people that realize that it's not a limousine that's sitting out there going, um, we're gonna take you and turn you into somebody famous or a supermodel or a star. Um, it's not like that. It's more of a, it's a door open, yes, but you have to be there to open the door and walk through the door. So if you are ready, willing, and able to head to a bigger market and you're ready to make that kind of leap, or if you have family or friends that live in LA or New York and you feel that you could go and stay with them to fill out the, the market and try and move your career forward, those things, um, ready, willing, and able, if that's who you are and that's for you, then I would be really, really happy to talk to you about whether or not I think you'd be ready for January. Um, anyway, I am also, I'm doing more modeling coaching. Um, so actually, I have, to, I have to like hang up this call and go on to a runway session with some people. So that's kind of why I did this back to back tonight. Um, I have some people that signed up for my Get Real program and there is a getrealactingandmodeling.com 
um, if you wanted to join in tonight and do this. It's a three month program. I'm doing runway on Tuesdays and I'm doing, oh no, wait, backwards. I'm doing prints on Tuesdays and runway on Thursdays and they go from eight to nine Eastern Standard Time every week for three months. So it's a really in-depth coaching program. Um, the pricing is on the website. If you'd like to join, there's still time to do that and I would be really happy to see you there. If you happen to do that tonight and want to get onto this, this particular session that's starting here in less than 10 minutes, um, five minutes actually, if you wanted to do that and I see it come through that you're doing that, I'd send you a link. It's a Google Hangouts Meet and I find that's a great way because not only will you look at me, I can look at you and I can see what you're doing and see how you're walking and talk to you about where your feet are and all that. So um, that's open and available for some people if you wanted to get on. I know it's like late notice and what are you going to do for the next hour? Um, look into it, see if you want to join me. And if it doesn't work out for this week, I could always do a makeup session sometime between now and next week and get you caught up. So you're welcome to do that and I'd love to see you there. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was fun. I hope it was interesting and that you benefited from it. I'd like to see if you have a great runway walk and you want to send me a video of it, please do post them. Um, show me your finished homework. I'm going to give a free modeling session to the person that I think has the best runway walk. I'm going to give a free modeling session to the person that I think has the worst runway walk. Not that I think that you should be like trying to deliberately do it really badly. Please don't do that. Um, and I'd like to give a free modeling session to the person that puts their homework up first. So if it's someone who already won a free session for doing homework, um, that's okay too, because there's more I could show you. I did have one girl that, that won a free session with me and she had one hour. So there's much more that I can show her because usually it takes me about 10 to 12 hours to teach somebody all I know about runway. Anyway, thanks for joining me guys. It was super to have you here and I hope to see you again real soon. I haven't decided what my next topic is, um, but there will be more. So thanks for being part of the Get Real Modeling and Acting program and we'll see you next time.